TYT Sports talking boxing once again with Robert Axel, the editor in chief of boxing.com. Robert, how are you? I'm fine, and you? I'm doing well. Uh, Johnny Tapia unfortunately died in his home in Albuquerque, New Mexico. He was 45 years old. You can call him one of the most fearless fighters that the sport of boxing has ever seen. Won world titles in three weight classes. However, uh, you know the story better than possibly anyone else. You have seen this man in person. You have reported on him in person. You have been with him in person while doing your reporting. I mean, what could you say about the man that he was before we get exactly to his backstory? He was like a loving character. There's no question about it. Uh, a difficult, uh, real attention deficit disorder, uh, in and out of trouble, um, had demons that one could count on two hands if one has uh, multiple sets of two hands. Uh, but he was a lovable character. He was somebody who didn't anger easily, um, a terrific fighter, um, adored his family, adored his wife, and I know that sort of sounds cliched, but uh, in his case it was really true, and a really an, an amazing, loving, and a person who will be very missed. His life included jail, suicide attempts, mental illnesses. Five times he was declared clinically dead as a result of drug overdose. An autopsy will be done, so we will know what the cause exactly was. But, I mean, again, you know possibly more than anyone else does with Johnny Tapia. Could you tell me a little bit about when he was growing up and the demons that he later faced? His father was murdered, it's believed, while his mother was pregnant with Johnny. His mother was kidnapped when he was eight years old. She was raped, uh, hung, stabbed multiple times. And um, the last time he saw her was when he heard screams, looked out of his second-story bedroom window, and saw his mother chained in the back of a pickup truck. She was found a few days later. She had crawled 100 yards from a ditch to a side of the road uh, where the police found her. She never regained consciousness. She died four days later. He was raised by his grandfather and his uncle. Uh, he was uh, clearly a disturbed uh, little boy, completely out of control. I remember his wife, Teresa, telling me in their home when I visited them in uh, Las Vegas, when they were living in Las Vegas, that uh, his grandfather and uncle used to take Johnny. He was Johnny was so out of control that they would keep on a leash. And every Friday night, payday, when the eagle flies on Friday, they would go into town with Johnny, uh, who again won his first title at 115 pounds, five foot six, tiny little kid, tiny little man, mm -hmm. or even a, a tinier little boy, on a leash. We'd go into Albuquerque downtown and challenge working men for their paychecks. They'd approach them and say, we bet that you can't beat up this little boy. And they'd look down at this little boy on a leash, and they'd laugh. This is the easiest money I'll ever make in my life. Uh, that was until they unleashed Johnny, and the laughter stopped. Uh, his wife, his widow, Teresa, told me the story by way of giving me an idea as to how Johnny was raised, how difficult Johnny was, and all that he had overcome in order to become the person that he became. He won his first 22 professional fights. I mean, what can you say about that? I mean, was it, was it that when he was in the ring, it appeared to be, uh, as we know, and as, as you have told a unbelievable story, really, about Johnny Tapia outside the ring. Inside, would you say that it was one of the safest places that he, uh, that he was at that time? It was, like with many fighters, the one place where everything comes together. Rocky uh, Graziano used to talk about that, how outside of the ring life was chaos. But inside the ring, he was under control. He had control of the situation. It was the same with Johnny. Uh, in the ring, there were rules and there were regulations, and there, it, w it was confined. 
uh, he liked that. It was that order and that discipline that not only gave his life structure, but also enabled him to achieve great things in his short lifetime. Uh, truly uh, a person to admire, not somebody to, not somebody that one would wish to be, but certainly a man that one could admire. He won 59 fights, 30 by knockout, lost five, drew two. He was knocked out only once in his professional career, a 1983 National Golden Gloves light flyweight champion, 1985 Golden Gloves flyweight champion. His first pro fight was when I was born, 1988. I mean, what would you say is possibly the one thing? I know that there are many, and his story... I know that we were talking off the air, you said could easily, easily be made into a movie. And many people would say, is this really based on a true story? Well, yes, it is. I mean, what is the one thing you would say that he could be remembered for? It's his boxing. It is basically that he was an incredible boxer, as fast as a fighter as anybody who had ever lived, a great competitor. Uh, and emotional in the ring. I mean, there are cool customers in the ring, and there are emotional customers in the ring, and then there was Johnny Tappy in the ring. He was emotional, mugging for the cameras, mugging for the audience, playing to the crowd. He loved being the center of attention. He was like a little child in so many ways. His emotional development stopped with the death of his mother. So Johnny, even though he grew and became a man, was still psychologically like a little boy and when he was at the center of attention like any little boy who's the center of attention he was glowing and his fists were flying so if he'll be remembered for anything it was for his incredible gifts inside the squared circle johnny tapia again dead at age 45 in his home in albuquerque robert axel thank you very much for sharing your thoughts and stories about johnny tapia and we'll talk to you soon oh you're welcome rick